Okay, so last video, I told you all that there was a clue in here. The clue was over there. Now, these are chicken coops, as you've already read in the thing. There's no point in me doing some huge build-up because you've already read it in the in the title. Um, but yeah, so, so I do feel that most chicken farms and most um, sort of survival farms on Minecraft are a little bit cruel. So I thought I'd modify it. And, and, and yeah, and as you've probably seen, chickens do feature on my logo and it's for a good reason. I am absolutely chicken mad i love my chickens uh we got chickens about three years ago and we were quite vulnerable at the time me and mrs blocks we don't have kids so we substitute with our animals so um we one of our cats died he was the first of our cats to die actually and his name is guineas and he was the biggest cuddliest thing that he was just such a big gentle giant and it was a real loss to us and when um, my wife works at a vet's, by the way, and when a couple of chickens turned up at the vet's in that same time that we were sort of um, uh, in the run-up to putting him down, we knew that he had a he had a brain tumor, by the way. Um, yeah, so we knew that we were going to be putting him down soon. And yeah, these chickens turned up, and we just had enough enough death. We had deathed out, and yeah, we were we, we couldn't take any more of that. So um, yeah, we took these chickens on, and we wanted chickens for a while anyway because we were in a good place for it. Um, yeah, so we took these two chickens on, and that was three years ago now, and it, and it, we were bitten quite hard by the chicken bug. I think once you get chickens, I think you kind of realise, especially if you're the sort of people that get attached to your animals. Um, it's they're, they're, they've got a lot of character chickens. My only criticism is that is their lifespan, uh, and and we lost three really significant ones in the past five months. So back in December we lost Mui, um, Moustache, sorry, Moustache or Mui as I call her. Mui was um, um, a shoulder chicken, much like her sister Snuggers. They liked to ride on my shoulder, and she was obsessed with sim racing. I think if you watched any of my TT series, I think there was one of my top top 20 times that I actually did it with a chicken on my shoulder and I'm reasonably confident to say that I've got the top time in the world for somebody doing it with a chicken on their shoulder I'm pretty sure anyway I mean Kicker H or Russy you know speak up if you're watching <laughs> and you have done it with a chicken on your shoulder there's a challenge for you boys but then um but yeah unfortunately we lost Mui uh, and yeah, that was a real blow. But at the same time, I still had a sister Snuggers, so it wasn't. I, we had that consolation. Uh, but then a few months later, I think it was uh, March, early March. I think we lost Batman. Uh, Batman was our sort of lead chicken. She is a girl, by the way. I just we've got some funny names. We've got another, her sister is called Jeff, but it's Jeff P H Jeff. So it's, uh, it's it's the effeminate version of Jeff. Okay, so that's how you spell it. You can all call your girls that now. If you've got a baby girl on the way. Just saying, Jeff's a great name. Uh, but yeah, so then when we had Batman, Batman, who, who we'd had from the very start, she was one of the first girls that we got. Been having breathing difficulties from the day that we got her. And and we'd been told that it was terminal. And then she just went on three years. And it was like, sometimes she'd never, you'd never even see it. Um, but yeah, and then one day she um, she it just got a bit too much for her, I think, and that was a real sad one. And, and because she was the the lead chicken, she was the number one, the boss. Um, the the pack really did feel it. It was really sad, especially Jeff's reaction. It was really really sad because um, Jeff was always very dependent on her. Was, yeah, really broke our hearts. And then if our hearts weren't broken enough, uh, then we lost Snuggers. Now. Snuggers was she she was the always the bottom chicken and she was she was very much bullied by one of our roosters so she very much became my baby and and yeah because I'd protect her from the rooster who the rooster our rooster just doesn't like blonde chickens he only likes brunettes he's very fussy I would she she'd she'd get bullied by him so we'd have to keep him separate but for when she was with him she knew that I would be there protecting her so so she got very attached. She was a very human chicken and all she wanted to do was hang around with us. And by the way, whenever they sit on my shoulder, you probably think that I get pooed on all the time. The only I've only ever been pooed on by my chickens once and that was by Moustache when she was really ill and, and I kind of forgave that. Otherwise, they close their bums and it's really irritating that they can domesticate themselves. They know, they know not to poo on you. 
It's very irritating. I wish I had one from baby because I think I could probably house train. But yeah, and then I wouldn't have to put like a baby gate up at the bloody door to stop them coming in. But yeah, with with all of the loss of my chickens in mind, I did think that it's a good time to build a free range chicken run. So yeah, what you're looking at before you hear is basically two versions. This is the one that I asked if you knew what it was and it's probably a bit more recognizable as what could be clad into a chicken coop. But I thought I wanted to pack it in a bit more. You know, I don't do much compaction. I'm not very compact redstoner. But I thought as I had some nice modules on the go, I thought they could, I could probably squeeze them in a bit better. And I'm glad I did because it turned out a bit nicer over there. But what I'm going to do is explain the basic principle. So with a chicken coop, you've got the you've got the nest boxes in here. So these are where you'd pick up your uh, these are where you pick up your eggs too. There's no eggs in there at the minute. And over here, though, I use shulker boxes. If you're doing survival, it'd probably be cheaper to use um, use the chests. But if you can get shulker boxes, they look so much nicer. And I'll show you once we go and look up at the um, the decorated version. But yeah, so with a chicken coop, I could have made it so that uh, basically as these fill, one fills, backs up all the way up to here, then comes back down here, fills this one, then fills this one, then fills this one. And then and I could have done it like that, but I didn't think it's very realistic to how chickens behave in real life. And so what I did, um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to make it so at least to some degree, it split these out. So what I've basically used to do that is I modified this. Now this was, this is a um, part of a design for an auto furnace, a uh, uh, um, sort of auto smelter. Yeah, now what this does, as things get come, it come in, as things get filtered into this flow in here, it will just split things up into their separate things. So let's just put a couple of packs of that in there. You see, as this comes down here, Oops, silly me. Yeah, I copy and paste it. I didn't copy and paste the top layer. I did it with that one over there as well. But then I, I noticed that one, but I didn't notice this one. Yeah, a couple of bits of redstone there. Right, there we go. Right. So what has basically happened there? As you can see, you can see that's flashing. I'm going to try this again because this is a terrible, terrible uh, example. Let's uh, let's let that finish flashing and then I'll explain what the hell is going on. This is another great example by Beardy Blocks. This is why I'm not going to do a block by block tutorial. It's better if I just explain the principle and then badly and then and then you can go and try and um, create something yourself. Okay, so I'm going to give a little demonstration. So let's chuck a couple of stacks of eggs in there. So as you see, it come down here, snake of items coming down here, one in each one. This one lights. Now, if you'll notice, when it gets down to the bottom, you see that one flash and that one flash. So what that's doing is basically it's unlocking that one un and then and then locking this one in and then unlocking it again so it can drop down into this bottom row of 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 of, of whatever the hell they are. But then, um, yeah, so basically what's happening here, once that gets down to the end, so you see all of this is in an off state and all of the back row back here is non state, keeping it locked. Um, yeah, so when that pulse comes down to here, when an item appears in here, this recognizes it, lights this up, turns this off, allowing this one to turn off, allowing for these ones here to filter. So, so this unlocks all these hoppers down here, basically. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Brace yourselves, guys. But then, um, yeah, and then what happens is then this turns on because this turns off, this then turns on which turns this row on, locking these hoppers so no more can flow in here. And then meanwhile, that is just a secondary release. This basically pings when something is in there so that then it filters around and turns that one off again, though it's so that this doesn't end up filled with items so everything drains through uh, and you don't end up with items items trapped god that was painful right so and, and in theory this should split things reasonably easy, evenly sorry i had a few stuck in here but um you can see that it's reasonably let's see what is going on with that one um but yeah that one doesn't seem to get any no love at all but yeah this this this, this is a bit clunky um but yeah yeah as i said it will do it'll do and chickens are quite random with how they lay their eggs anyway um, but the, yeah, so basically how this one works, the only problem with limitation with this one is you can't drip feed it. You can't just have an egg turning up every 30 seconds or so because they are all going to end up in this end chest because they'll only be in here. When this gets here and tells this whole road to drop, there isn't going to be any eggs stacked up here. So what we need is big bursts of eggs coming through. 
So what we need is what we call a packet counter. Now, packet counters back on PlayStation, a packet counter was actually the first thing I ever built on PlayStation. If I can find some pictures of it, I'll show you some pictures of it. Um, but this was the first module I ever built. Not this one, not this one. This isn't mine. Mine was much more complex and unnecessarily complex. Uh, but this was, I think, I, it's one of these hard ones to find where it came from. Um, I think it's Zoomavoid. I've got a funny feeling that may have may have, may have have first released this one, but it's one of these great circuits that have kind of got lost in time. The actual creator has become lost to time. Um, but I did notice some um, Cass made a lovely modification to this to turn it into a ticker. Uh, but what this basically is, um, it's not even a packet counter. I just modified it into a packet counter, but it's actually a timer. So what we'll see um so yeah what is happening here now really because there's 10 in there this should be lit now it would be if it wasn't for this this uh redstone torch on the side which is give, giving this block here a power of 15. now no matter what happens 15 is the maximum so no matter what happens this comparator no matter how much is in there it is always going to be cancelled out by this this 15 power because if, if power 15 goes in the side it kind of um it, it, it cancels this one out so what is happening here this one's being cancelled out and also at the same time it's being led up here and because this block is powered it's keeping this one off and then at the same time it's also locking the stuff in here now if this was uh say a glass block or a half block or something that can't be powered um, this block here wouldn't be um, it, it wouldn't be locked in this place because because this this isn't a um, this isn't a powered block. So what happens is when this block here receives power, this will turn off, meaning that this will turn off, meaning that this can finally communicate what is inside this hopper. But at the same time, this turns off and this turns off meaning that now this is the locked hopper and this hopper is allowed to drain into this one. So although this comparator will be reading what's in there, it will be slowly degrading the charge because it's gradually emptying into there. So I'm gonna give you a demonstration of what, what is happening. So if you see now what's happening there, you can see that those are draining back into that one. And when it gets to the end, it flicks back. Let me just put a few more in there so we can uh, see exactly what's going on there we go we'll put 26 in there that will do um so now we'll give it give this a charge again and now we're waiting until that's turned off and you will know once all these are drained out look five four three two one that's flicked back so now what what this is basically just a very nice tight compact timer i love this timer it's really 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 useful and cassie's modification is excellent and i think i may even well go use cass uh, mezuma games is um, um um modification on the on the tv over there that i, that I made because it really is much smaller than the hopper run that i did for my ticker uh, but yeah, and that's what I used to, to, to use as a packet counter. Now I should probably go and show you. Okay, so both of these are the same. Now what happens is, yeah, you chuck the eggs in down here. I'll explain this at the end, don't worry, I'll explain how this works. But this is a very old hat, this one. You, know, you Some of you may recognize it already. Um, but yeah, down here you chuck your eggs in and yeah, they all go up to the top. I've got loads of eggs in here already, I think. I didn't even empty this one. Let me take some of these eggs out because I'm not, I want to give you a demonstration on the other one because it's a bit easier. Uh, so we're going to come over to this one. So chuck the eggs in. It goes through this device that I've, this module that I've yet to do, yet to describe, and then comes up here, and it should come popping out here. You can see the eggs coming up through the the bubble column. Um, yeah, and this bubble column as well. Yeah, you can see that it's got bubbles coming up through there. So a, a water, water column, spitting them up to the top, and then feeding them into this uh, this hopper here. Now the locking hopper here is this one, so we should see a build up of, of, of them coming into this one. Um, but then what is happening is this is all locked in place. If you can see that's where I've put this. Uh, this is all locked in place at the moment by this, which is the, uh, sorry, I should have probably done it in the same color, but then um, yeah. But then yeah, this that's this down there. The orange, orange is purple, purple is magenta, okay. Uh, I, I should have done this differently, I know. But then, uh, but yeah, so what's happening here, here's the timer. So what, what happens is down here in this hopper, this comparator 
measure, is actively measuring its weight and giving out a charge depending on how much is in that hopper. Now, as that hopper builds up, you see it's, it's, it's almost there. So this one isn't lit, this one's lit. Maybe if I go chuck a couple more in, we can go watch it, um, watch it fill up. So yeah, we should see these two light up now. Any second. Oh look, they've only just started coming up. I will say I can see a couple of eggs down there. This is uh, this this is reasonably good. I think it's sort of like more than ninety percent um, efficient, but you do lose some eggs in it. It's, it's just the way it had to be. In that one, there's no no loss, but in this one, there is a little bit. For aesthetics, oh yeah, and we're seeing right. I was there jabbering. Um, yeah, that's turned off. So that that let that go through and set this timer off. So basically, how I've linked this up. If you see this, uh, if you remember this block here. Um, that this is leading on to. I've used this as the locking block. So because this is above the um, above the hopper, that's the hopper that it locks into. So that hopper is locked until the point that it's filled up enough to activate this timer and then it turns that off, allowing it to flow into this purple slash magenta, or what should be magenta run. Now this was quite a hard one, this, because I ran the um, locking, uh, the locking blocks uh, on the inside and it was actually really hard. I came across a real problem and I ended up having to loop it with this one uh, because because if I just left that dead, if I just left that so it didn't loop, that piece of redstone kind of came straight and ended up locking this hopper here. And yeah, it was a real pain, but then it was a bit better. Then if you play around, you, you will be able to work it out. Uh, from my module, from my crappy module descriptions, you'll be able to do your own version of this. And don't, if, if you're one of these people that really rely on block by block tutorials, try to get away from that. I, 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 I'm speaking from somebody that used to follow a lot of tutorials online, block by block, and I'd really struggle if people didn't do block by block. These sort of tutorials that I'm giving now, these sort of descriptive ones, you're going to find so much more useful because you're going to be uh, a lot more versatile when you do get to do finally get your head around it. Try and ignore all this crap down the bottom, by the way. This is um, this is my uh, sort of lighting thing. So when I, when you clad it and build the chicken coop coop around it, these lights tell me from the outside whether there's eggs in there or not. So you don't have to come up every time and check and see if there's eggs in there, you know, so we know if they're lit, there is eggs in there. But I'm not gonna talk about that bit, that's that's quite simple. Um, but yeah, so 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 now the eggs have gone around here, they've all distributed nicely into all the things that I showed you. I say nicely, there seems to be a pattern. Um, if I went and put the 23 eggs, or is it 23 eggs? Uh, no, it's 29 eggs. It takes 29 eggs to build up in that hopper before it releases and and yeah so if i went and put 29 eggs in i think what we end up with in is seven five four five four and four and it's like that every time so it's nice and random it's like how my chickens would um yeah so i was quite chuffed with it but so that's all that kind of described i'm hope i hope i haven't destroyed it too much um and the reason why i made that wood block is what because when you clad it I wanted to make all the kind of lowest blocks. This one didn't matter because it was going to be inside, uh, but this one was going to be visible from the outside. And there were actually a couple more that I found around this side that I had to kind of cover up. But uh, yeah, it's when you clad these things, you'll learn all that for yourselves. And it depends how you make it. We'll go see mine in a minute. But yeah, before we do, I will explain this bottom thing. There is a, um, this, this is quite versatile. I've used this little circuit to spit the, uh, spit, get the dropper to spit the items out into the bubble flow. But basically what this does is it detects when something comes into a dropper and then it tells the dropper to spit it out. Now basically what happens here is the comparator is doing the same as what it did in the timer section of this, is, is measuring, looking for, for items to turn up. Now at the moment any item turns up into here, let's just give a little demonstration. There we go, it's pretty, really quick, it, it really is quick, it's only a few ticks before it spits it out. And what happens is, is basically, yeah, measures that, so it comes out here. When it comes into a comparator, comparator immediately boosts the strength up, so always remember that. And then so what happens is, when that comes around here, you've got signal strength of 15, as we said before, no matter what, that isn't going to be able to compete with the signal strength of 15. Uh, so it's always going to be a zero if that's powered. And so what that does is it, is it turns that off. Now, because this is actually in the long term, a couple of ticks later, the thing that powers it, 
it turns this into a ticker and that will always be a ticker. So, I mean, if I turn that off, you see this is a permanent ticker. So you see permanently given the tick, uh, but all you've got to do is then link this run back into there and it will power that, so spitting it out. So it basically just turns it into an automatic dispenser. And yeah, and that's what that is down in the bottom. And I actually kept the color coding on that one. So now I've explained how it works. I'm hoping that I didn't destroy it too much, as I said. Let's go and see how I put it together and clad it. And there she blows. I give you the Chicken Coop 3000. Now, as you can see, what you do on the floor, I mean, a lot of you may have been wondering how it actually collects the eggs. So basically what you do is you do a hopper run. Oh, and we may as well go under this one of me. As you can see, I've, I've basically done a hopper run that goes all the way around and covers the entire bottom of the uh, of the of the chicken coop. And then I've used two tones of of uh, grass to make it look like grass in here, like a mowed lawn. I don't know why you'd mow your lawn in your chicken coop. That's the whole purpose of having chickens for a lot of people is to mow their lawn. They do a great job of it. Um, but yeah, so so basically all your chickens would be free roaming around in the outside. Oh, where are my chickens? Damn. Ah, there they are. Right, right, they're all under here. They're all in the shade. It must be a hot day. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, put all my chickens in. What happens is they all lay on there. When they lay, eventually it gets sucked into the machine. Some of them are probably laid already, but remember we need 29 to build up in the top before they finally lay. Uh, but yeah, so, so we've got all the chickens here. We've got Batman and Jelly over here. Oh, and Moustache, what are you three doing all hanging out together? What's going on over here? Looking mischievous. Oh, right. And then uh, over here, we have got Jeff. Oh, Jeff, Jeffs. Oh, I miss you, Louie. Uh, but yeah, and then we got Phil. Phil is my rooster. You don't want to eat his eggs, trust me. Uh, uh, Jelly, Shamu. Did we see Shamu? Shamu. And then who else have we got over here? Hendy. And Poonhammer, he's my, he's my, he's our first rooster that we had. We had to put him down because he had arthritis. Bless him. Uh, and then Chubbly McGee, Chubbly McGee, she's currently being groomed as my favourite. Uh, Snugs, oh, Snugs, I miss you. Oh, Dimps, almost forgot Dimps. Dimps is like Phil's favourite thing in the world. If, you know, what are you doing over here? You'd be in, with Phil in real life. Go and get over with Phil. Get over Phil. Phil is obsessed with Dimpfner. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, and that's how you do it anyway. And I put a few trees in here. I was getting a bit carried away there. I think I'm out with my chickens sometimes, which reminds me, I do need to go check on them soon. So I'm going to have to get a move on. And I don't even know why I did this. I, I thought I'd just put a little uh, little door on it just so that it's, you know, you don't want to... Uh, you don't want foxes getting in here, do you? So, yeah, that's about it. We put a water trough in there just for a bit of context, but you could do anything. Oh, and the other thing, the other thing as well. Here is northeast, southwest, my, my weathercock. But yeah, you can just go to town on these sort of things. Um, but yeah, how you do it is up to you. Okay, so I know it looks a bit elaborate, but if you're like me and you feel a bit bad for the Minecraft chickens, despite them only being Minecraft chickens, then uh, then do go and give something like this a, a shot, you know? And I mean, in real life, this is what I'd build for my chickens if I was, say, a millionaire. Or I mean, if I was an MP, this would be going straight on my expenses, I can tell you that much. But yeah, guys, if you do have room in your garden, I'm going to leave a link in the description because I really do advise taking on chickens sometime. Maybe if you're not quite as attached as we are, because as I said they do have reasonably short health uh, lifespans oh look the chicken's actually going up oh well done chicky who's that phil go on there mate in you go in you go oh phil's actually using it that's cool oh no but if he lays eggs up there there could be a problem you may want to stick barrier blocks at the bottom so that your chickens don't go laying eggs at the top maybe but then you don't want phil eggs anyway i did mention that before i think um but yeah so i'm um, yeah, if you can afford space in your garden, please do, because because they do need rescue, and there's so many of them that just get destroyed after their, their service, and, and yeah, it's, it's really sad. They produce loads of eggs. I mean, our new ones, they produce every day, you know? But yeah, anyway, I hope you haven't struggled too much with my descriptions of things. I'm, I'm just glad I didn't do a block-by-block -block tutorial. I mean, a block-by-block -block tutorial of the, the actual redstone component would have been bad enough. Never mind all this sort of stuff, but then, um, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I hope I've given you enough to be able to make an attempt at a free range chicken coop yourselves. And yeah, but I'm going to leave it at that. Anyway, I'm Biddy Box. Bye bye. <laughs> Beer,
Woo, 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 woo.